Forward TV. The world is thinking. What if you could own your own internet connection? Um, it sounds strange at first, at least it did to me, um, but when you look back at the history of telephony, um, back along, you know, in the early days of telephony, uh, people in rural areas owned uh, the, the copper wire that ran from their house. They weren't being served by companies. Instead, they built networks as cooperatives, rural telephone cooperatives. Um, the same sort of history in terms of rural electrical deployment. They built cooperatives where companies wouldn't come and fulfill their needs, and they ended up owning the infrastructure that they used. So rather than a one private company running copper to their house and therefore owning that wire, they own the wire. Um, they own the cooperative. Um, so why should we care about whether instead of somebody else owning the fiber that runs to your house, what if you could, instead of waiting for a Verizon to come and deploy it, what if you could purchase your own internet connection, purchase your own fiber that ran to your house? Um, the first question is, uh, well, how might this work technically? Um, and this is the way we envisioned it uh, in terms of how it would work technically. Uh, that uh, it wouldn't be, it's obviously not feasible for me to run one, to run my own, to pay for my own fiber to be run from my home to some point of presence out there in order to get service from an internet service provider. Uh, instead, that would be very costly. Instead, it would make more sense for a neighborhood or a city uh, to all have fiber run to it at once uh, through, and have a trunk that runs through the city streets with individual fibers split out to serve individual homes. And then individual homes would purchase those fiber strands and connect to any provider of their choosing at a point of presence. Um, again, that might sound strange because today the wire that runs from your home goes to Comcast or goes to AT&T um, and it terminates at their central office uh, or uh, there are other facilities. Uh, this doesn't have to be the way it is. You can imagine an interconnection point where uh, anyone who wanted to provide people with internet access or other services could install equipment and offer it. They wouldn't have to go through the expense of running fiber because the user would already have purchased it from another provider. They would only have to pay to rent out some space in a co-location facility uh, and set up some equipment and then market the service. Um, this is essentially, uh, these sorts of facilities already exist in Europe where people are, again, where there's this open access regime where third parties get to use the infrastructure of the network operators, as we were discussing earlier. Um, in Amsterdam, for instance, they have a network where there's a single fiber that runs to every home within the network's region. Uh, and then within the point of presence, the interconnection point, multiple service providers can come in, install equipment, and provide service uh, to end users. Um, Is there a practical limit on how many providers that you need? Um, Physically or economically? Or so, uh, not necessarily. But I mean, if you, build, uh, if, uh, if you build a small building, not that many providers can be in it. Um, so, that's a quick... Uh, I, running a little short on time, and that's a quick overview of the technical points. The one overriding point is there's no reason technically why this, why we think this system couldn't work. The bigger question is uh, why would anybody want to do it? Um, uh, and uh, I would, uh, the way we looked at it, there are a couple reasons. One is that early adopters, right, the people who buy the HDTVs before everybody had HDTVs, the people who buy the faster computers or always want the newest gadget, these are the sorts of people who would pay an arm and a leg, uh, or at least an arm, to get a fast connection now, sooner. Um, and you can imagine people uh, sort of, you know, the way they formed computer clubs not that long ago, forming, you know, the 10 gigabit club or the 1 gigabit club 
where they would be the ones who are the early adopters and buy their own connections and then find out how to do new cool things with them. Um, in terms of average consumers, the main advantage would be that if you own your own connection, you could dictate who you, could, who you would connect it to. As long as there were different service providers, you would get to choose rather than being locked into the one company that owns the wire that runs to your home. 